Look at that. So beautiful. Me and my friend Griff were going for a bike ride and we saw this on the side of the road. Someone dumped it. I guess they didn't want to put it in the trash or something. Then again, you can't put them in, in the trash, so the only option you can do out here is either dump them or break them up and hide them in the trash, which is a real shame. A little bit of wear and tear, and it looks like it was out in a barn for decades because of all the dirt on it. But it looks like it wasn't outside for very long before we found it, so maybe it was dumped that same day. We were really lucky because if it got, if it got rained on, this particle board would have expanded and you would have run really noticing the like the splitting of the sides if we didn't get it sooner it'd probably end up looking like this hitachi where the particle board has gotten wet and expanded and looks just terrible so not only were we lucky to come across it but to come across it before it got rained on i believe it's the late 1960s rca color of uh, sorry victor as rca victor color tv it says new vista color Vertical, horizontal, tint, color, contrast. Okay, these, those work, but this one's a bit stuck. I believe this TV has a safety lens on the front because you can see there's this discoloration around here. A lot of older televisions from the 1960s, well, they weren't so safe and so they might explode and so what they did was they put a safety lens on the front they glued it to the CRT that way that way in case it blew up it would blow up that way and not towards the audience you know because especially back then kids used to sit really close to the TVs you would not want to have a like the, the PR nightmare of a CRT exploding on kids and so you can see the glue that hooks the the lens on there is starting to decompose and rot away now thankfully it's not too bad but if it gets too too close into here, we're gonna have to heat this up, remove the lens, and it's a whole big mess, and there's a big chance of blowing up the CRT. So right now, it's probably good enough. We just let that stay like it is. Sadly, we don't have very much information on the back. This one probably had the model number there, but that was spotted off. You know, focus, vertical linear, vertical height, no, vertical lin, I guess it's linear. AGC, color, killer. For the screen, we have red, green, blue. Video peak. Kind bias or kine, like cinema, but German, like the German word for it. Red, green, blue for drive, in, normal, mid, raster, out, service. So, it's interesting. Normal, high, something. Power, reset button. UHF, VHF, and here we have the remnants of the service label, I guess that'd be what it's called. So it looks like the last time it was repaired was 1984. That's pretty long ago. And it's such a shame we don't have all this. But yeah, we can see the date. So 1984, 1984, or, or perhaps it's 88. It's hard to read. So as soon as we saw this, we knew the bike ride was instantly over. We ran back to his house, borrowed his dad's dolly, um, the shipping blanket, and a, a tarp strap and we bought it back and we wrestled it onto the the, the 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 dolly as like a trailer and I hauled it back with my bicycle my electric bicycle and man this thing was it's one of the bigger things I've ever hauled with a bicycle because this thing's heavy and we, we turned it upside down so so much stuff came out of it and we we, we went ahead and cleaned it out because Everything had dirt dauber nests and a rat's nest like the entire inside was a rat's nest And so we already cleaned that out. So that's good to go like for instance inside of here was just a big old You can see the remnants of it was just a big dirt dauber nest So let's open it up to get a look inside and then I have a very yak We can try to slowly bring it back and see if we can bring it back to life So cool. Maybe I should get an air compressor. But, you know, turning it upside down actually did a good job of cleaning out a bunch of the junk. So that's good. I love how this looks. It's just so big and overkill compared to later ones. 22CTC38XA. 
Let me remove this plate so we can see underneath there. But if we can maybe figure out what model this was and maybe what year it's from, that'd be pretty cool. Go upside down for this. Oh, and the the speaker looks like it's in actually surprisingly good condition, so that's very good. Another thing, like if this if this television had gotten wet, that speaker cone probably would be disintegrated. That's one thing I'm kind of disappointed about. Usually, there's like a big schematic on this older stuff, like on the inside. So I don't see that big schematic. So that's a that's a bit of a shame. Because usually they have a big big schematic stuck to the insides and has like the model number and all that information, but yeah, the the model number is very difficult to find on this. So what do you say we try to start it up and see what we get? I'll wiggle the tubes and make sure they have a good connection because I think that they probably would maybe break connection over the years. Oh, and before I forget, I found a local thrift shop has a plug that almost fits that. Not quite, but I can kind of, I can kind of squeeze it on there. So that saves me having to make a thing for it. That's pretty good. All right, television's on. We have ourselves a little variac. Thank you very much for the viewer that sent this in. It was a subscriber package. And we have the that is AC voltage to the television. We have it in series with the light bulb. 300 watt light bulb back that is. Oh, it's starting to glow. Nice. Got ourselves some glowing tubes, but no sound. The light bulb is glowing a little bit, so it is taking a bit of power. It's 120 volts, so I don't feel like going over that, that's for sure. You can see the that one's up, that one's up, that one and that one. Um, that one, it's hard to tell what's going on and what's not. It doesn't seem to be pulling much power either, so I think there might be some electrical issues in here, in which case I'll have to wait until I have a nice workshop built in order to really take this apart and look at it. So that's pretty much it. I'll put it in storage, we can get back to it later, it'll give me plenty of time to look up parts about it and the schematics and find any bit of information I need and I can get all my electronics area all, all figured out because I'm currently working on building a big 15 feet by 24 foot workshop right there. So. When I get that done, we can bring that in and we can really tear that thing down and really clean it up. I think it'd be really nice. Oh, that's a shame. I have books for Zenith, Philco, Motorola Zenith, Admiral, Sears, but I don't have an RCA book. I do have a pictorial guide to color TV circuit troubles and TV tuner schematic service manual volume 2. So. Now I imagine, I looked it up, and I think that TV might be a CTC38, and I've heard that the flyback transformers die on those, so that might make sense. Although I imagine I would have audio if that wasn't, if, if that was the case, so something else is probably happening. Actually, probably several things are happening. Looks like this does not have specific information about any specific model. Instead, it's more about how to figure out color TVs in general. So that's actually pretty ha handy, but just in this instance, it's not. 
super handy. I don't think it'd be a very good idea for me to work on this outside because, well, electronic stuff, it's nice to have tables we can spread it out. Plus, now's the time when I really need to start focusing on building my big shed. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very quick little video. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.